Hello, my name's Corinne and I'm the author of Sorrel and the Sleepover, which is illustrated by Susan Varley and it's published by Anderson Press out on the 1st of April, which is perfect timing for a book with beautiful springtime blossom in it. So let me tell you a bit about Sorrel and Sage. Sorrel had never had a friend who was just the same, until she met Sage. They liked the same games, sang the same songs, and said the same things at the same time. They even had the same stripe on their tails. It was the luckiest, most perfect thing to share with a friend who's just the same. So Sage invited Sorrel to a sleepover at her house. It was Sorrel's first night away from home. Mum helped her to pack a little nutshell with all the things she might need. She's got her teddy, her toothbrush and toothpaste and her pyjamas. Are you nervous? asked Mum. Oh no, said Sorrel, because Sage and I are just the same. Sage's home was woody and wide, solid and strong. There were aunties in the east nest, there's an auntie, and cousins in the west. Branches that went on forever peppered with pine cones and the softest green needles. Sorrel was amazed. Sage was so lucky. Sorrel and Sage snuggled up as the sun went down. I can't wait to stay at your house next time, said Sage as they fell asleep. But while Sage snoozed, Sorrel squirmed. Her home was not like this at all. Sorrel's home was small and slim. Its branches were broken and bumpy and it wobbled in the wind. There were no uncles, no grandmas, no brothers or sisters, just Sorrel and her mum. She decided not to invite Sage to a sleepover at her house. Best friends don't have differences, she thought. She wanted Sage to think they were just the same. But Sage didn't forget about it easily. She even packed her nutshell. Sorrel had to make up excuses. Um, we can't have a sleepover at my house because my mum's very poorly. She ate a bad nut. It made her face go green and her nose go red. And she needs peace and quiet while she stays in her bed. Hmm. You can't come to stay because two dozen cousins are coming to stay. Their bag, shoes and coats take up so much space. There's no room to have friends at our place. Um, because, because our root pipe burst yesterday, the plumber said that it will take days to repair. You can't stay over because there's water everywhere. We can't have a sleepover at my tree because, because, sighed Sage, because we've painted it pink, it took us all day. So the leaves are too wet for an overnight stay. Pink, said Sage. Yes, replied Sorrel. One day, Sage and Sorrel were playing hide and squeak when a breeze brought a flutter of pink petals their way. Let me see. Pink, let's follow them, said Sage, scampering towards the pink tree. This must be your home. It's so beautiful. Sorrel was shocked. Sage didn't notice that the branches were bumpy and broken and that it wobbled in the wind. Her mum invited Sorrel, um, invited Sage to stay for tea. Your pink paint is perfect, said Sage. 
it? said Silver's mum. And a cherry tree always grows pink blossom. So had some explaining to do. I'm sorry I lied, she said. I thought that if you came to my tree and saw that it was so different to yours, you wouldn't be my friend. It doesn't matter that it's not the same, laughed Sage. You're so lucky to be different, Sorrel. I don't know anyone else who sleeps in pink clouds. That night, Sorrel and Sage enjoyed the best sleepover yet in a cherry blossom bed. Sharing the same blanket, watching the same petals, they were the friendliest of friends. At Sage Snoo, Sorrel smiled. It was the luckiest, most perfect thing to share something different with a friend who's just the same. Oh, doesn't that look cosy? So now you know that being different can make a friendship even more special. I hope you all have a lovely springtime with your friends and look forward to seeing you again soon.